Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Raul, and this week I'm going to show you the completed build of my GT40 here. This is chassis number P1015, and it's how it appeared at the uh, 1966 24 Hours of Daytona race, um, which is the first race of the of the 66 season. But here's a picture of the box art. This is uh, the Ravel. It's actually the Ravel box if you saw it earlier. Um, and it's a Fujimi kit. This was issued in actually 1989. So it's kind of an old kit, one of the first ones, but uh, um, built it as it is. And, and there's the finished build. We'll zoom in a little bit on it. There we go. And uh, uh, this is a Mark II, which I believe uh, 66 was the first season for the Mark II. I don't know if any Mark II's actually raced in 65, but I do know as far as this chassis goes, uh, P1015, this was the first race for uh, this particular car with um, Ken Miles and Lloyd Ruby driving it, um, sharing the driving duties. Also, the 24 hours of Daytona race, it was the first time they did a 24-hour race. Um, before that, it was 12 hours. But what's uh, quite interesting with that was the amount of GT40s that was there. Shelby had brought this car along with two others. They had uh, three cars in total, all of them Mark IIs. The Holman and Moody team brought two or three cars. That's a little confusing on that because one of them was an automatic, um, a full automatic. But uh, I think they brought two, two or three cars. Then there was the SX Wire um, car and um, another privateer. So there's a total of seven, or no, eight, eight or nine GT40s that were at that race. But there really wasn't any Ferrari presence there either, um, which I thought that was kind of interesting. No factory backed Ferraris. There were some privateers running. Um, so the race doesn't get a whole lot of uh, attention as far as, but it was the first race where the GT40 is the Mark II, the, this one 427 car, showed how competitive it actually is. Now the Daytona race, the in the beaches of Daytona where they raced this, um, it was capable of doing 170 miles an hour in, in the bank turns. So I mean it's a pretty fast race and some of the slower cars were barely doing 100. So there were some scary parts where they were just shooting past um, some of the slower class cars. But there was a total of 60 cars that had entered the race. Um, so it's kind of fun reading about all of that. But what I found interesting is it was one of the first races where they started to have all kinds of issues and problems and they, they found out the bigger, taller tires that they were using that they switched to, whether it was Goodyear or Firestone. But all the Shelby cars, they ended up having to cut and clearance for the, the tires. And uh, so this car has a pretty big bulge. All three of the Shelby cars, it's pretty prominent. Which also kind of wonder if that's why it was rough body work and, and you know, they, they did the black on the front. But don't, don't really know if the black on the front was because of that. Because they had to cut a hole and clearance it and then they made the bolts higher. And I think they did both sides, but it was more prominent on that side. When they were hitting the high banks at high speeds, the tire was really rubbing. So they had to cut holes and, and clearance uh, the fiberglass a little more. What was interesting, uh, Ken Miles, he ended up leading the race early on. Pretty much by the second lap he had gotten into the first place. He had a pretty good pole position, but he had gotten himself into a first place at that point and pretty much dominated the race. Some of the other cars were having uh, problems and mechanical failures, but um, the Shelby team is figuring out a bunch of them and getting them taken care of. So it was also the first race for the, the GT40s. They finished 1-2-3. This is the winner car. This is the first place. There was a second place and third place car. The very next race was the 24 hours, or not 24 hours, the 12 hours of Sebring race. And I don't know why the history doesn't bring this one up either. That race, um, a couple more GT40, it also was a 1-2-3 finish where the GT40s had swept the race. But that was the one where the X1 Roadster, also known as Big Ed, it's a red Roadster, um, that's one I really want to build and somebody finally came out with a trans kit of that so I'm gonna build that one I don't know if I'm gonna build that as my next GT40 but I really want to build one of the Roadsters and I got a bunch of those but the X1 Roadster placed first a Mark II placed second and a Mark I placed third so that was the second race where they had three in a row first second and third place finishes were, were those three 
And then the third race was, of course, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And that's the one that the, the movie really focused on, where um, three more GT40 Mark IIs had crossed the finish line, and they crossed the finish line together. That's what really made that what controversial was when they slowed the, the leading cars down and they all crossed the finish line at the same time. And then the first place car that led most of the race at Ken Miles was driving. And it was actually this same car, chassis number P1015, but it was painted blue and it had the number one on it. And it had the scoops here for, I believe those are the, for the brake duts. So it had migrated a little bit. Um, these cars were modified kind of per race and changes were made as needed. But that car... Um, because he slowed down, it ended up being a second place finish. And then the black number two car that uh, I built, and you saw that one, finished first. So for three races in a row, they actually placed one, two, three, the GT40s. But it's kind of funny, the, the Ford versus Ferrari movie really didn't focus on that. But I haven't read too much in the 12 hours of Sebring, so I don't know if Ferrari was present at that one yet. Um... I was more interested in that that was really the only appearance of that X1 Roadster in its red format and kind of Mark II setup, and, and it won. Won under some unusual circumstances. And then this car would have run the third race, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, but because he was asked to slow down across the finish line together, he ended up being second place. But, uh, you know, like Ken Miles, he, he drove this, and from what I'm reading, he's a wonderful driver and a wonderful mechanic or understood understood these cars so which they touched on in the movie but on my build here uh, it's almost out of the box um a couple of little things the Ravel kit is actually more of the standard gt40 that fujimi issued fujimi did issue this kit later on with more of the mark ii parts the that uh, this car had since i have other kits and i had those parts i kind of grafted them on so if you saw my videos, you can see the bulge I added here, and I reshaped it and redid it just to my liking. I really don't know how accurate it is, but it really stands out in the thing. And I changed uh, that divider out to more replicate how the cars were. And then I moved the gas cap from this side to this side, which the, the race car at this race had that. And I also had to remove the gurney bump, uh, gurney bubble they call it. So I removed that, and then last thing was fill in where the scoops go here um, to, to complete the changes. Well, actually not the last thing, one more. Um, in the Fujimi kits that have the spoilers a little lower, so they have you sand off the spoiler that's molded on the body, and then graft on this one, which is also a separate part. So um, the later Fujimi kit has those parts, and some of the Mark IIB kits so if you start looking at uh, the Fujimi kits, some of the Mark II B, the Daytona ones that are marked uh, 67 Daytona race, have a lot of these parts along with the the Mark II B parts. I'll get more into some of that when I when I build or feature one of those, as uh, I do have one that I completed, and I'll get into those specific parts. But I also uh, did the tire transfers, the rub-on tire Goodyear lettering, and I painted the wheels black. I wasn't really sure, like the box art has them black, so I kind of went with the box art. But a lot of the photos, the wheels are gold uh, from some of the race photos. Whether or not it's because they swapped wheels and tires. So it may have started with a black set and finished with a gold set. But I'm not really sure there. Same thing with the, the front. Um, I know they were not this shiny to begin with. But I really liked it shiny and I decided I'm going to, after I clear coated and everything, I really like the way it looks. I mean, it's it's a it's a showpiece on my bench, is what it is, and um, I just wanted to do it because it's a little bit unique. It's also the first time the Mark II placed first, so I did want to build this one because of that, and uh, also the decals on this one with the blue stripe because the kit comes with black decals. Um, these are from uh, In Decals. He offers these decals, so I use his decals on this build. And again, really like it. Um, the decals went on really easy, so no frustrations or complaints. Plus, it has these on that go on the windshield here. And it's got gauge ones in there, too. But once you have the body on, you can't see any of that. And it, it's really hard to see even the seat belts and some of the stuff in the detail in the interior. 
but you know it's kind of fun as I'm building it but that stuff's kind of in there and then the underside of this nothing real fancy I didn't do a whole lot to this one uh, as far as detailing it goes I put the photo etched hood pins on there that are in there and then the photo etched mesh on the back and the taillights um, really happy with the way this one looks and came out but I really like these kits they're simple easy kits to build they build really well and um, they do have upgrade parts for them um, I've got a lot of them I'll probably build some more of them but this one I really like just the way it looks and I decided that I needed to finish it I started it a long time ago but I, I needed to finish it it just kind of was one of like many of the projects I'm actually finishing and showing you on my channel here are really kits I've started um, and they've been sitting you know a few years back I had well over 60 started kits so this is one of them but in the last few years I've really been focusing on that but there's a few kits that um, are recent purchases that I have built and a couple others that uh, I just got excited about on the channel and, and built so there are some new builds that aren't started because um, one I wanted to show you some builds from start to finish where a lot of the builds I'm doing are uh, started kits so I figured uh, um, I'd show you the finished result of this one and I love the way how it looks I'll put it on on my display with all the rest of them so thank you for uh, subscribing and tuning in and your comments I appreciate it and uh, I will see you next Saturday and you guys you have a wonderful day